Hello. Hello. Back for another episode of Powerful Nonsense. Welcome back. One, two, five, which means we're a quarter of the way to 200 episodes. Excellent. No, quarter. I know what I meant. I know what you meant. They might have Another 100 episodes. Yes. For all those people with their maths like, actually, no. <laughs> it's actually yeah. two thirds of the way. Oh, well. Have you been offensive to our audience? Only the, only the ones that were thinking that, that they, one, they were going to correct. That one map. If you were thinking, oh, now I'm going to correct them on that. Then yes, I am being rude to you. Our trolls, <laughs> our trolls. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're a troll, cool. screw you. So that's well, a very aggressive start to an episode. Yeah. Um. Who are we? Who are we? That's what you were going to say, wasn't it? Yes. Who are you? I am Wayne Ingram. Who I'm are you? Jemmy Odis. There we go. Excellent. See? And this is powerful nonsense. Welcome for the first time if you're joining us. Yeah. And if you this is not the first time, then welcome back. A regular coming back to hear more of us. Yeah, yeah, I'm. That's very kind of yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm still not, <laughs> still not recovered. Several hours later from this stage. So. <clears throat> Anywho, so they're gonna be like, "All right, Wayne, we get it. You went on a stag do." Yes. Did I... And you made three podcast episodes. Yeah. Which were horrendous because of you, Wayne. Yeah. Don't think you're being all cool because you're like, oh, I had it rough. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, let's get cracking. So. We got a kind of cool little episode. I think, I think so. I One think that we actually important. said we were going to do a while back. It was in the um, the locker. It was in the vault. The vault somewhere. Um, and it is about the dark side of working from home. Mm-hmm. And I think it's quite apt that we're talking about this because we've had quite a few conversations with people recently. I think mm-hmm. where people just are like, "Oh, well, you work from home, so you don't you don't do anything, do you?" Lucky you. I bet you take half just day got breaks and Jeremy Carl on. <laughs> <laughs> Tune your hand. Sit in the garden, Sit which I do do sometimes. Yeah, me too. But not with Jeremy Kyle on. No, no, no. Don't, don't. no, Jerry Springer, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Loose women. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah, right. Um, yes. So, yeah, so we kind of want to set a few things straight and kind of just kind of be like, well, it's actually not all that amazing. But, but also, as I mean, well, it's great, don't get me wrong. But also, I think as well, nowadays, I think employees are allowing a lot more, in, yeah, employees are allowing their um, staff to actually stay at home now mm-hmm. and maybe take Fridays off or work from home on a Monday. Yeah, a few of my housemates have been working from home a lot recently. I'm like, oi, see, they're see- this is my space at this time of day. <laughs> see, they're seeing get that. Out. They want that flexi time now, which I think they're doing. is kind of like, oh, we trust you now. And I think they know they've got to get into treating their um, staff well. And I think mm-hmm. working from home is one of those sort of steps in the right direction. But like we're going to mention soon, I guess for us, it's like as self-employed entrepreneurs, it's probably a bit different to someone who's just doing it on a Friday from work. Yeah. But we'll try to kind of focus on both sides yeah. as well. I think I think both, from all the notes, I think they're all pretty much mm-hmm. relevant, whether you're working for the man <laughs> from home or working for yourself from home. I think they're all, all relevant. So. Cool. Um, so where are we going to... Okay, from? May, apart from maybe the first one. Yeah. <laughs> which is <laughs> the workaholic. Yes. Um... Because I think when you're working for the the man from home, you're like, nah. This is day off. This is, I'm going to put in a two-hour <laughs> stint yeah. and then I'm finished. And then I'm done. Yeah. Um, Just like Skype in your I think in your I think we may be doing them a little bit of a disservice there. But but I think the workaholic no. thing is definitely, you, you're more at risk for that if you're working for yourself. I think anyone that I know who kind of works like nine to five there, if they do like a, they've got, oh, I'm working from home today, it's literally like, yeah, I haven't kind of started work yet, but or they do like <laughs> two hours and they bang out their work. And usually it's a Friday, so they've kind of planned that they know Friday mm-hmm. is a work at home day, so they get more done on Thursday. But yeah, in terms of like the whole entrepreneurship or self-employed, when you've got your office at home, it is dangerous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. seriously dangerous because I think, especially when you start out, you're so excited to get going that you spend all your time and often it's probably in your bedroom or mm-hmm. your computer, yeah. which means that you're kind of, you can be up all night then you can fall back into your bed after and I think you want to get so much done mm-hmm. that you just go way overboard and then you and I get found yourself in some trouble. The times when I've really been workaholic mode is when I'm like, right, today is my day off. And then you're like, right. And then about by 12 o'clock, you've done all the things that you would have wanted to do on your day off and then you're like, kind of mm. don't really have anything to do now. And um, I might do a bit of work. <laughs> Yeah, I think because you, you have a constant list, don't you, as someone mm-hmm. who's worked for yourself, you've either got invoices to send or people, clients to try to win over or editing or whatever else it might be. And I think 
because you've got access to do work, whereas most people have that location in their offices. They mm-hmm. know when they leave that premise, they're finished for the day. That's it. Work stops at that moment. Mm-hmm. For us, it's kind of like you have to be switched on at all times. You might get a voiceover client that pops through. You might get a video editing job or you might send an email or right. somebody wants, I don't know, their invoice resent and, mm-hmm. or the video resent. And so you're kind of constantly on. And that's the danger when you're at home, like you say, instead of maybe, I don't know, sitting with your family or sitting with the people you live with, you just think actually I could just get ahead of some I could get ahead right. on some of the work that's I've got I know I have to do. And then yeah, I'm guilty of that all the time as well. At night mm-hmm. time you just think, well if I just do two hours now, it means I've got less to do tomorrow, but then you do more tomorrow anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I do think it's really, really important to kind of set your boundaries. Set your boundaries and be really disciplined in mm-hmm. how much you want to do, how much feels enough as well. Because sometimes you might be like, Oh, two hours that would do for today, but actually you could move the needle a lot more forward if you put in that six hour stint or you did like a full eight hour mm-hmm. day and so yeah I think it's not for everybody and no, I think it takes time and I think really one of the main things I know from my friends who have now had jobs nine to fives and become freelancers is I think when they f- finally at home I think it's really difficult to actually be able to switch yourself into that work mode mm-hmm I think it's difficult because you're so used to when you get home from work, your brain is actually wired to that yeah. place being a relaxation place. It's mm-hmm. where you, that's it, work's been left behind. But now suddenly you've made your bedroom your office and now mm-hmm. that's where you've got to be focused and have energy. I think that's a massively tough transition. Well, that's it. And that's, I think, is also kind of goes on to the next point, which I thought kind of like made sense to go to, is it's kind of like two sides of the same coin because um, on the flip side, you're very inclined to become a workaholic because you're like oh, i'm bored now i'm gonna do some work um on the flip side when you're doing work and you're like i'm bored of this work I can it's stick netflix so on. easy just to be like yeah netflix or xbox or, youtube videos yeah and and so it becomes so easy to get distracted and so it's it's constantly about balancing like managing that energy mm-hmm. and kind of being like when i'm when i'm feeling up for it do i embrace it or do i try and bottle it up and mm-hmm. <laughs> hope that I'm going to feel uh, as inspired the next day and things like that. And I think that takes time. You, t- you start getting your routine of when you feel like you work best, then you mm-hmm. take a break and then you get back onto it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think it is, that's probably one of the biggest challenges people have, how to kind of switch on that focused attention when it's not in an office where your boss can look over it and say, hey, you nearly done with that. You're like, no, you're the one who's calling the shots now and you've got to kind of mm-hmm. self-motivate. Yeah, which is which is really tough. Um, but beyond just like the whole work ethic stuff, <laughs> it kind of leaks into so many other aspects of, of your life as well. And I think one of the real problems is um, it does put a strain on. I mean, I don't experience this so much because I don't live with like family or friends mm-hmm. per se. Um, but it really does put a strain on relationships, particularly when they've been out all day, you've been at work, well, at work, in your office, at home, just like working away and not, you've not spoken to anyone all day mm-hmm. and then they come in and you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. love me, love me, love me, love me, love me. <laughs> yeah, I think loneliness is a massive thing for people who work from home, especially because you're not having that near the water cooler conversations or going back mm-hmm. to a cup of tea in your lunch break or go out for lunch with your, I know your team or whatever else, I think you are kind of isolated mm-hmm. from other people and that you do go a bit mental as well because you're at home and you're thinking, I wonder what everyone's thinking that I should be doing and what should I be doing? And yeah. I haven't got any work done today, but no one's going to tell me if I'm not doing it. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, it can be really kind of scary initially. And that's the thing as well is on a kind of slightly different point is that fact that there's nobody kind of going, we've got to be here. Mm-hmm. So then when, a, when somebody says, what are you doing that day? You go, no, I'm I'm not doing anything that day. <laughs> when really you should be cracking on, and it's so easy just to be like, yeah, I'll go to the pub instead. Oh. Siri thinks you want to help. No, Siri, no. <laughs> um, yeah, and you're just like, yeah, no, I'll I'll take that time off because I'd rather be at the pub. Than <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to say, work. since I've worked from home, like I really don't tend to have a, a set uh, structure yeah. to my day, but Me it's neither. more I have projects or tasks that need to get done that day mm-hmm. which is also quite dangerous because then you think oh, then let like you say you might go out in the afternoon and you feel like oh crap that's when I knew I was productive and then you kill off yeah. the opportunity to do the work that you knew you had to get right. done so yeah it's pretty tough that way yeah and and I think that is another challenge is the fact that when you're when you're uh, <laughs> sorry someone's leaning on. against the studio oh right 
uh, when you're at home, um, presumably you're living in an area that, you know, has got amenities. Mm-hmm. I'm throwing that word out there. Um, and, like, look, places you like to go because you're familiar with the area, like the local mm-hmm. pub or, you know, mm-hmm. going out for lunch or whatever. And so because you've got that locality, it's so easy to be like, yeah, I'll just have a day out to there. <laughs> um, pop for a walk to find your inspiration. Yeah, for and because you've not got anybody going, no, no, we're paying you to be in this office. Mm-hmm. You're then in that constant, well, I say constant battle with yourself. It's quite often you're not in that battle with yourself. You go, okay, see you, bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think so. I think as well, though, on the flip side of the idea that no one's there with you in the day, I think sometimes if you do live with like housemates or family members, I think mm-hmm. sometimes they don't understand That's true. that you're working and actually, you know what, guys? Yeah, this was my bedroom or this was where our computer household computer was, but now it's my office and mm-hmm. I need to be focused. And then I think that can cause a lot of arguments as well because yeah. they don't understand. They just that walk in and they're like, yeah. so, well, I was talking to, yeah, yeah, to Johnny the other day and do you know what he told me? And you're like... And you're like mid-email to like a really important client and you're just like, really, right now I can't talk. Yeah. And that, that causes issues as well. And especially if you get in that mindset of you are literally like trying to overwork like the word holicness then you're going to get family members or people you live with just saying like do you ever like socialize or you're never around i always feel like you're not there anymore and you're not being very present and Mm -hmm. you've got engulfed in what you're doing Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so and the the theme seems to be is this constant managing of of energy and managing of expectations of both yourself and other people's expectations of of you Mm -hmm. and that kind of seems to be the the constant theme of just like making sure that you, you're you balanced mm-hmm. because it's so easy to go one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's definitely a constant battle that I battle with all the time. Like years ago, I burnt out and now I've gone the other way and I'm going, no, I need to really <laughs> kick myself up the arse yeah. to, to do stuff. Yeah. Um, I think that's important though. I think it's kind of assessing if it's working, are you getting in? Like again, if you know what you value and you know you're getting your work done, you know you're getting your bills paid, but have you neglected socialised and have you neglected some friends I mm-hmm. think you need to always step back away from your job and say okay look at the bigger picture because your work is not your whole life right and go back and say okay I have been a lazy git for the last two weeks nothing's got done I haven't got any clients I need money but I also but I did spend a lot of time with my family but then you need to kind of like trade off I guess it's again mm-hmm. the expectations but having a discipline to know right what you need to focus on or what makes that sort of more holistic right way of being self-employed or a Mm -hmm. freelancer and i think as well like sometimes the two problems of like are you going to workaholic or are you going to chill out kind of thing they end up actually reinforcing each other so as an example uh one thing i think is always a bad move is when you get up in the morning and you think right i'm on it today i'm gonna check them emails and you're still in your gym jams you're checking (laughs) your emails you're not ready for the day you've not even signaled to your brain like it's time to work you've just gone straight in because you're like, I need to check those emails. Yeah. And then you just end up having a bit of a lazy day because your, your body's going, well, hang on, what are we working for? <laughs> you're still in your gym jams. That's some serious NLP priming techniques to uh-huh. get yourself in a suit to sit at your desk. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it doesn't have to be that extreme. It's just yeah. the idea that you have to be come red like Bill, like you're actually turning up for your work. And I think right. that physical sort of manifestation of being a employee or being someone who does work, mm-hmm. I think so programmed for that like being at school all the time and mm-hmm. putting on your uniform and then going to school right. I think we're so wired for that so you kind of have to build a kind of I don't know routine routine habit. that you do that shows that once we get to here mm-hmm. it's on and we're focused on one thing working. that I've heard a few people do yeah. which I think I have tried once or twice <laughs> but I haven't got into the habit of it but it does kind of work a little bit is they'll get dressed not necessarily for work but they'll at least mm-hmm. get dressed and then they'll go out the door walk around the block and then go back into work and oh, to yeah, in yeah. home and then go straight into work. Sort of like prime It's almost like their commute yeah, yeah, yeah. to work. <laughs> they just walk around the block and they go, right, I'm at work. Does that show how we've been civil, like a civilization, we've been such programmed <laughs> yeah, to actually, right. we cannot get into work mode unless we have a commute. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite if scary. I don't have my coffee in my hand from Costa. And you just start purposely walking into people with your shoulder, like, <laughs> oh, like trying to bustle through them. And start <laughs> muttering under your breath. <laughs> <laughs> cool, I think we need to take a break. Cool, I think so too. So Excellent. we shall be back in a moment. We thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, yep. the University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, so why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're we alumni. Went we yes. went there. So everything that we kind of deliver to you kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also, 
they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, <laughs> it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Welcome back. Hello. Um, so. Do you want to just emphasise what we are talking about? That's what I was going to do. Was you? Oh. I, was just, that was, I was just about to say, we're talking about the dark side. How could I underestimate your expertise, Wayne? This is not my first rodeo, Jim. I know. I'm just checking it. <laughs> Professionals Working around here. amateurs. Exactly, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even done my facial massages and warm-ups. Me neither, mate. It's fine. <laughs> I'm still a bit too limber on the weekend. <laughs> Very limp today. <laughs> Stocky biscuit. <laughs> no, steady on now. Let's not go there. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so, just for Gem's benefit, we're talking about the dark side of working from home. You happy? Mm-hmm. We're also sort of sharing some of the light as well. Oh, yeah, obviously some we're of the good stuff. Light. Like, but that makes a good title. Yeah, exactly. Clickbait. <laughs> It's not really clickbait at all. No, not really. Clickbaity would be, this is what happens when you're working from home. Or... And you won't believe what the fifth one is. Yeah, or that. Or, this guy died from working at home. Will you do the same? (laughs) See how it happened. (laughs) Anyway. Yeah, click for pictures. (laughs) (laughs) We can make that happen. We'll do some fake ones, get some fake ones. Some really bad clickbait. Anyway... So we're not talking about clickbait, we're talking about the dark side of working from home. Yes. We've got to keep saying it now, just to make cool. it. So where are we going next? So um, one of the things, uh, and it's like one of the few biohacking things I'm like, yes, is sleep. Yes. And working from home can be a bugger on your sleep. Yeah. It's Particularly cool. if you're like me and you're a night owl. Like I go into peak performance at like half ten in the evening. <laughs> peak performance. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the ladies say? Steady on now. Uh, <laughs> but like, <sighs> peak performance can be. <laughs> yeah, no, you won't. Well, anyway, anyway to half <laughs> ten. I'm not going to be able to explain this now because it's all going to sound like a euphemism. Okay. <laughs> but, Tell us about your peak performance at half ten. Half ten in the evening. I'm like inspired, <laughs> ready to go. I just I can't. I can't, Jem. You've ruined this for me now. So <laughs> But I but get yeah. the idea. You so, like to work at night, yeah. and I think I feel most creative at like half ten in the evening. Yeah. I think sometimes that is that's, like the best time of day for me to. I work. actually think that goes back to that whole idea about the um, like your willpower has a certain limit. I think you go through the whole day putting off. I don't want to work. I don't want to work. And I think by the end of the night, your willpower's given up. Or maybe I oh, might maybe think. No, the flip side I don't of think that. what it. I don't. You're think not overthinking it is. now, getting into. It. You just find you have that. Yeah, energy. I just I have tried to train myself to be a morning person. I've done the trying to get up, at, and you know how much I am not a morning I person. Know. And I've tried the getting up really early and whatever. And I do have, basically, my my peak times are between 9 o'clock and about 12 o'clock. I've got those three hours. Night time? No, morning. morning. Oh, okay. And then I go completely unproductive till about 9, 10 o'clock in the evening. And then I could, I could work quite easily all the way through to 4 a.m. That's why you can never have a 9 to 5. I could, no. <laughs> you would be horrendous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd get into work, I'd be like, right, guys, let's go. And then by lunchtime, I'm like, I'm done now, finished, going home. Finished. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, those are like my peak times is that I've got three hours in the morning and then in the evening I could I could w- easily work till 4 a.m., no problem. But I think in terms of sleep, I think the biggest distraction is the idea that you know you're like an arm's length away from switching on a computer and getting some work done uh-huh. and you've got your phone in your pocket and an email pings through and you think, well, I can't answer it on my phone, switch on a computer... You answer the email and then suddenly you found yourself doing three hours of work. And you're like, well, that mm-hmm. won't happen. Yeah. And then obviously you're looking at a screen all night, night long and then you can't, it's obviously keeping you awake. And then who knows, family members say, like, oh, get in bed, that causes an argument. You have an argument that you're not in bed and then suddenly yeah. all kicks off. Does, it, does that mean you've got a bedtime that your mum's like, you should be in bed now? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have any bedtimes. 
okay. But I do have a set. I have my own bedtime. Yeah. Which for me, I'm like, I, I try to get in bed like 11 o'clock every evening. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not in bed by like 11, for me, anyway, I think they say that the hours before 12, if you're sleeping there, they're more... I don't know, they're like they? deep or healthier sleep. I don't know if that's true, but I have It's probably something like that, yeah. yeah. I so mean, I, it's very difficult for me because I don't finish work till 11. Yeah, plus I just think as well, like, you're more likely to make mistakes at those sort of late hours, I find, because I'm not really switched on. I, I can do it, but then I feel, feel like I'm saying to myself, Jim, you should be asleep, and then... Mm-hmm. See, I don't find that. It's really weird, and, and, I, and this is... Because obviously I don't finish work till late, but this is something that I've always had, mm-hmm. even when I was, like, a teenager. yeah. And I'd finish school at like half three, and I'd still be like, right, I'm gonna go home, and then and then I'd be up really late yeah. doing work and doing creative stuff. Yeah. Just because I just get inspired at that time of night. I don't know what Strange. it is. I wish I could fix it and move well, maybe it to it's the day. just up to people just to find what works for them. Yeah, but then find their own rhythm. I right? think yeah, once you know that rhythm, like you say, like you said in the first half, it's about letting people around you know that this is how you work. But then it could be that that then overlaps also, into their way of work. Like right. if you're not in bed and your girlfriend or your wife's in bed and then well, yeah, suddenly you're like working hard, that's I'm true. pretty sure you'll get the position where they'll be like, look, it's bedtime. You're not working through yeah, till yeah, yeah. two o'clock in the yeah. morning. Yeah, true. So I think also like one thing I'm really conscious of is because I know that that's kind of my, my rhythm. So my housemates will go, go to work, right? And if, if, if it's like my night off from the day job, right? Yeah. Housemates will go to work. And I'll, like, work solidly up until about lunchtime. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I'll try and push through. But then by the time, like, th- half three, four o'clock, it's kind of like, all oh, my willpower's gone. It's like, no, that's it. We're just chilling out now. Right. And my housemates will get in at, like, five, six o'clock. And there's me playing video games. I'm, like, I'm really conscious of the fact they might be like, does he just play video <laughs> games all day? Is yeah. that all he does? <laughs> <laughs> how is he surviving? Yeah, like, how is he? What's, what's going on here? <laughs> Um, but it's just because I'm very much aware of that rhythm and I'm just kind of like, look, it's going to come in a few hours' time, kind mm-hmm. of thing. So. I think we hammered that point. I think it is, it's going to be a very personal thing, but yeah. obviously work around other people as well mm-hmm. and you just have to get your sleep. Otherwise, you're just yeah. going to be a pretty shitty, unenergetic, uninspired human if you're not mm-hmm. getting your recovery time in. Yeah. Cool. So how do you deal with, because I know you've, you've dealt with this a few times, mm. how do you deal with... The people just assuming that you're a bum. Oh, what, well, because you work from home? Yeah. And then I think initially, I think, I think again, it comes back to that's only their perception. People usually think people work from home aren't doing anything because they don't physically see it. Because you're in an office, other people are looking at it's you. Like you like if the tree falls down in the forest and no one's there to see it, it's, it didn't make it's, a sound. It's totally that. And I think as well, when you work from home, people don't know that there it may be, like you say, if, if you're someone who works in the evening, they get home at five and they're done or whatever, six o'clock and they've finished for the day. They don't see you putting in two hours from 10 till 12 or they don't see you waking up early or they don't see all the little bits. That I think that's the thing. You think you work from home and that, oh, you're more flexible because you can go out in the afternoon. But I think probably a lot of the times you add it up. Who's someone who's got a, I don't know, their sort of routine in order, I think you'll realise actually they do probably, uh, probably a lot more hours than you first expect from someone who works from home. But again, it, it's about how you build it. You may be decided to work from home because you only want to work four hours a day that's true and that you only and you don't want no commute and that's okay that is true and that's what people do so it's not about i don't think working for home is a working from home is all about replicating the same feeling of going to an office and doing that same system in which case you may as well go yeah in office. exactly yeah. and then you'll have the social aspect too and i think that is one thing is most people who have chose to work from home is because they know they've got a bit more control over their time mm-hmm. and they don't want to work that whole day and they want it to be flexible and again, again, for people who say, oh, it seems lazy when you work from home or they don't feel you're doing enough work, I think, again, it's just educating them on that. Yeah. And saying, well, on certain days, I'm sure with friends anyway, just explaining what you do and how you do it. Mm-hmm. And that might allow them to understand, oh, I get it. That's why you, you're you not available on a Saturday because you're still doing some work then or yeah. in the evening. And I think, yeah, it's just about educating people on what you're doing really and especially your close people who maybe live with you. That's the, They're the most important people to kind of share that with yeah definitely um so really i think that the main thing to consider kind of going back on what i said near the end of the the last half of the episode is that it's all about kind of that self-discipline it's all about managing your expectations of yourself managing other people's expectations of what you're going to put out there and really giving yourself like a i don't want to say solid routine because it almost defeats the object but a some sort of general 
rhythm, I think, more than routine. Yeah, yeah I think you've got to know, like, how, why did you get into it, first of all, so you know how you wanted to live, and have you been able to implement that, and does that allow you to get the work done that you need to get done? Because I think often if you're working from home, you're a freelancer, maybe, or you're self-employed, mm-hmm. so you're working on a weird schedule anyway. That's true, But it's yeah. being able to be adaptive, but know that at all times you're not letting any value, whether it's being with your family or whether it's getting work done, kind of go out of balance. Yeah. And it's knowing, like you say, knowing the rhythm to check in on yourself to make sure things are yeah. working together without yeah. compromising other areas. Yeah, and it's, it is one of those things I've certainly found anyway, that it is a constant back and forth. You're constantly going, oh, no, I've done too much of this, so I'm going to go... And then you end up going completely the other way, and you go, oh, no, no, hang on, that's too much of that. And it's just like this seesaw kind of tug-of-war type thing. And it's just trying to get it perfectly balanced, which is, I think, the the real challenge. It's the hardest thing I find about it, is just finding that balance. I just think the great thing with people who are from home, I think it's really empowering, number one. Mm -hmm. I think there are, we say there's a lot of dark side, but the upside of it is if you're disciplined and you've, like you say, you know why you got into it, you know the lifestyle that you wanted because of choosing to work from home, then I think the upside is so worth it. Yeah. But like, yeah. And there's I other, agree. I don't want to get into too much anyway, yeah. but... No, I agree. Don't know. Yeah. I think yeah. so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah. shut up now. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we'll wrap it up there. I think we've kind of nailed the point. I don't think there's anything else that we've missed. No, I don't think so. I just think one thing I did want to say, I know this is the point, I wanted to say and it's the idea that I think when you are working from home because you haven't got those social um, groups that you're not in the office with is just to make sure that you find people in your local yes. area lucky for me and you well, like we say if we tried to invite any of our friends out today to go for lunch yeah pretty much not happening yeah so I think it's really important that you do have a few people in your area who are self-employed who can go for a quick lunch mm-hmm. break because it's kind of really depressing if you're um, at work that day and then you go downstairs and you have to eat lunch by yourself and you go back upstairs to work and you're kind of like where it's nice to be able to get out or at least speak to people who are having that same sort of feelings and Mm -hmm. it's nice to speak to other freelancers or people who are self-employed about how they kind of keep themselves occupied that was my main point really no no i think that's a very very important point very important point um so yeah so we'll wrap up there so Mm -hmm. thanks very much for tuning in um if you're watching on youtube please hit subscribe and hit that thumbs up very important um and uh, I don't think there's, there's not many any books or anything that we've mentioned in this episode. There probably are like loads of books, but not ones that I've kind of read directly. But if you want show notes for this one, <laughs> powerfulnonsense.com forward slash 125. You can always leave a comment at the bottom and tell us how, how you work from home and what's working for you. I like that. Yeah, you like that. do that. And uh, also leave us a review on iTunes. That's very important. Five stars or more would be greatly appreciated. Um, so... I am going to go and get some sleep because it's now... Good plan. 1pm. Excellent. So I'm going to listen to my rhythm <laughs> and go and get some sleep. <laughs> and then you're going to find your peak at 10.30. <laughs> yeah, right. <exactly. laughs> Good stuff. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you next time. See you later.